me. Yeah, right. You're right. You're here for me. Refer me. No, 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 no. No, that's not. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. Okay. What you are doing, you are making a monthly of the first amendment. Please, the quorum, please. It's been seven months. You've not called on me. You've not my messages. I'm saying that that's not right. That's not right. Fun times. Welcome, guys. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the press briefing room. Okay. Are we ready? Are we going to behave? Wow. While many folks. The quorum, please. Sorry to our guests. We apologize. Yes, oh I apologize. Yeah, I apologize. Okay, well, many. <sighs> that what really, I think one of the things that really stands out to me about that clip was the behavior of the other reporters. Yeah. What happened with the loyalty of the free press? Because reporters should be sticking up for a, another reporter asking a question. And that's what he was trying to do. And the gentleman that you heard, Simon Atiba, chief White House correspondent for Today, Today News Africa in Washington, they're talking to Karine Jean-Pierre. They had the Ted Lasso staff behind them. He's there because he has serious questions to ask, as I'm sure other reporters did. But he was he wanted to ask his questions. He didn't want to sit there uh, at, for a press tour of Ted Lasso, which ultimately, let's be frank, that's what they were doing it for. Simon joins us now via Skype, Chief White House Correspondent for Today News Africa. Simon, pleasure to have you. Uh, I was really shocked by that because I feel as though you are rarely, if ever, called on. When you are called on, I've always thought that your questions were questions that I would like to hear the answers to. I mean, we've played, when they have called on you, we've played them on the program here that people can listen to coast to coast or watch the watch on DirecTV. Tell me what happened that day, because they brought these these Hollywood stars out and you're there to ask about some serious issues. How did this go down? Uh, thank you, Dana. Thank you for having me. Uh, it was a shame what happened that day. Um, you know, it's been seven months. Uh, the press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, she's not called on me. Because when you do your job, when you ask the real questions, the White House doesn't want to call on you, they sideline you, the you know, try to brand you as disrespectful when you yell a question, but you don't really have any option but to yell your question. The other option that you have is to send your questions in advance or send your topics in advance. And if you have a real great questions on China, Hunter Biden and all the other questions, they actually are not going to call on you. So wow. it's, yeah. And that's that doesn't sound really how you would expect these press briefings to work. I don't think a lot of people who are listening or watching knew that. No, you know, normally when you go to the briefing room is to ask the questions that the American people really care about. You're not there to be friends with the press secretary. You guys are not friends. You are there to do your job and she's there to answer questions. She's being paid for that. And what's going on in the White House is you know, it's like um, the press briefings are almost rigged. You have the people in the first and second rows who get all the questions. And the people in the third, second, uh, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven rows are there to basically watch them. And the questions are mainly for left-leaning media. So you have CBS News and NBC and CNN and AP and Reuters, all of them. And so when you sit maybe in the back of the room like me, it's almost like you should understand how things work here. You you know, we are there to do a prearranged press briefing. And, you know, I don't follow the, those rules. I believe that the American people deserve the truth. And for doing that, I'm being sidelined, I'm being discriminated against. And it's shocking what's taking place. I believe that the First Amendment is under threat. It protects the freedom of speech, freedom of the press, association, and even the right to petition your government to seek redress. And all that is it's at stake right now. I think you make very good points. We're speaking with Simon Atiba, Chief White House Correspondent for Today News Africa, because he is, I mean, really, the, the reaction that I've seen in the press to your trying to ask a question 
uh, I was really disheartened. I mean, from programs like The View, I expect it. But from <laughs> other reporters, other reporters who were there in the room with you, what really uh, blows my mind is that if that had been, I think, a Republican administration, when people like Jim Acosta would yell questions, he was defended. <laughs> You yeah. you weren't even and you you were actually quite respectful. You were just being loud with your question, and they were condemning you. Well, yeah, I, and and actually one of the guys who condemned me, who is a CNN analyst who used to work for Playboy, Brian Karen. Oh yes. Karen. So he's very disrespectful. He's been he was removed from the White House Correspondent Association last year because he became violent in the Rose Garden. He was fired in 1992 by press, uh, by TV station because he was rude to President Bush. He he's been, you know, he's been he confronted, um, you know, President Trump press secretary many times, and he was one many times. So that's the guy who is trying to, you know, uh, lecture me on how to be great in the briefing room. And you know, as I said, I don't go to the briefing room to yell my question. You know, it's a is the way they disrespect me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm also as black as the press secretary, and that's why it's shocking. She is ready to call on people from ac around the world, from Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, and different places, India, except Africa. Mm. And she does that because I don't abide by the rule. I believe that we should do our job. We should keep doing our job. Our job is simple afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. You're not there to become friends with the people in power. And when you do that, they punish you. They isolate you, they silence you, and they discriminate against you. And that's why it's happening to me. And it is happening to you. We're speaking with Simon Atiba. Even when, and you've, you've discussed this, and I've heard other people bring this up before, even if, you know, for instance, if it's about Nigerian elections, if it's about, you know, some of the proposals in Uganda, you're not, you're not called on. Yeah, and the, the worst thing, just to give you an example, in December 2022, last December, President Biden hosted the second U.S. Africa Leaders Summit in Washington, D.C. In attendance were 50 African leaders. And, and for those who are watching or listening, Africa has 54 or 55 countries, depending on who you ask, the AU or the UN. And when you have 50 African leaders in Washington, D.C., what that means is almost the entire continent of Africa is in Washington, D.C. to meet with President Biden. Yet the African journalist who covers U.S. Africa leaders, Africa, U.S. Africa's relation, relations, was not given, is not given the opportunity to ask even one question. It's not just disrespect against me, disrespecting me, it's almost disrespecting the entire African country, continent. And to give you another example, the VP, the vice president is going to Africa tomorrow. She's flying tomorrow, she will get to, she will get to Africa on Sunday. The first lady just returned from Africa. The secretary of state just returned from Africa, even as they are trying to expand ties in Africa at a time where China is taking over, building roads, bridges, expand, spreading disinformation against the US. They don't have the courage to call on the African journalist who comes to the White House every single day and tries to ex strengthen those ties with relevant and accurate information. It's shocking. It's almost like a curse, like almost as if the country is cursed. They don't understand their friends, prefer to do business with enemies. And, and, and also there are other issues. One of the biggest crises in the world, the biggest humanitarian crisis in the world right now is not in Ukraine, is in Ethiopia, Tigray region. 600,000 people have been killed between 2021, 2021 and 2022, according to the US. Yet we don't see the billions of dollars flowing there. We don't see people talk about you know, suffering and you know, the international coalition saying that we need to go and save those black people. And President Biden is the person who said he was the guy from, for the little guy, for you know, black and brown and, and the minorities. And I've not seen that love and care in the White House. Um, and you bring up a very good point, too, about the Chinese relationship and the Belt and Road Initiative. And you would think that they would want to call on you more 
because of of your knowledge of this and and because also it just it, you would be able to you would be able to ask the questions I think better than some reporters who don't have that sort of knowledge. Simon Atiba, last question for you: What would you like to see in the White House press briefing room? How would you like for it to be ran? Because there have been some people who suggested that you should run it. How would you run it? Yes, <laughs> thanks. So I just want people to be fair, to respect people, and to not to judge people based on how many people came to view their program yesterday, how much money they have, what type of jet do they fly, what type of ties do they wear when they come to the briefing room, what type of car do they drive. Uh, I, I want people to understand that all the people in the briefing room, they represent either the American audience or American allies, you know, like people in Africa. And you should give, you should, you should take question from across the room, including from people who disagree with you or who will ask you tough questions, because their job is to come to that briefing room, seek the truth, challenge the authorities, not to become friends, not to smile. Um, and, and I just want them to be fair. I want to say something to the people watching now, people listening now. I want them to pray for me because I feel like I need prayers. Uh, and, and I think that's like the last hope because uh, the, what I really thought the U.S. was, you know, the land of freedom and, and where people respect the law. I've seen that even in the White House, that law is not respected. People treat you almost like in China or Russia where you are afraid to ask a question because of fear of retaliation. And I'm seeing those things happen in the White House. And I want people to really pray for me and even pray for the country that those of us who came from outside the U.S. because we saw a shining light, a country where we could be as comfortable, more comfortable than where we were, where there was freedom. I'm afraid that I may end up being in a country that is almost as dictatorial as where I used to be. Well said. And I think that we absolutely can and can pray for you and will. Simon Atiba, one of the few real journalists left in the world. We appreciate what you do. And thank you for your time. We absolutely will pray for you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of course. Dana.